Nihilism comes from the Latin word nihil, uh, which means nothing. It is a word uh, associated uh, with uh, meaninglessness, uh, rejection of values, and uh, giving up on life. Nihilism doesn't sound like a very positive word, and for some reason Nietzsche's name is strongly connected with it. But was Nietzsche really a nihilist? And if he was, uh, what did he really mean by nihilism? Let's try and find out. The German philosopher Friedrich Heinrich Jacobi was one of the first to use the term nihilism in philosophical writings towards the end of the 18th century. Later on in Russia, nihilism became synonymous with a revolutionary movement that rejected the authority of the state, church and the traditional values of the time. Russian anarchist Peter Krotopkin, as stated in the Encyclopedia Britannica, defined nihilism as the symbol of struggle against all forms of tyranny, hypocrisy and artificiality and for individual freedom. Nihilism was essentially the fundamental value of the anarchist movement that wanted to destroy the core aspects of the old world in order to allow a new one to rise. As it is stated in Wikipedia, Russian nihilism focused on those things that it saw as meaningless in the dominant hegemony of religion, morality, philosophy, aesthetics and social institutions. It did, however, incorporate uh, theories of hard uh, determinism, atheism, materialism, positivism and rational egoism. The movement uh, advocated a new social contract uh, based on materialism and individual freedom. It didn't want people to rely on religion and abstract uh, concepts uh, to define their worldview and social systems. At this point, I want to take a moment uh, to explain what uh, materialism means for those not familiar uh, with the term. The materialist believes that matter is the fundamental element of reality. In the history of existence, uh, first we had matter, incapable of thought, uh, out of which developed uh, thinking matter, aka humans. Our thoughts uh, do not appear until we already have matter organized in a certain manner. The human organism is matter organized in a very sophisticated way. So because of the historical existence of matter before the thinking human, our mind is just matter that operates in a specific manner. The reason materialists are so adamant about this is because they want to emphasize on what is this worldly and abstain from any metaphysical explanations of the world around us. Nietzsche was a materialist and that's probably why nihilism interested him so much. The ideas put forth by the Russian anarchists uh, reminds a lot of uh, Nietzsche's teachings and most probably Nietzsche himself was influenced by the ideology since it was popularized around the end of uh, the 19th century, around the time uh, Nietzsche finished his most important works. He mentions nihilism uh, mainly in the notes that were posthumously published as a book titled Will to Power. In one note he writes, A nihilist is a man who judges of the world as it is, uh, that it ought not to be, and of the world uh, as it ought to be, that it does not exist. According to this view, our existence, uh, action, suffering, willing, feeling, uh, has no meaning. The pathos of in vain is the nihilist's uh, pathos, at the same time as pathos uh, and inconsistency on the part of the nihilists. It is clear that uh, even in his notes, he does not uh, diverge uh, from his usual poetic and polemical style. What does nihilism mean? That the highest values devaluate themselves. Nietzsche likes to question the nature of things. Especially when it comes to values, uh, he wants us to rethink uh, the values that we hold uh, true and work on the idea of uh, transvaluation of values, since uh, values and ideas that were considered uh, the ultimate uh, truth at one point in time don't uh, necessarily need to stay that way forever. When Nietzsche talks about values, he mainly means moral values and religious values. He knows uh, that we see the world through value-colored eyes and morality and religion define the color of our world. From the perspective of a nihilist, uh, it's not a question of giving up all values. It's a question of uh, which values we need to transvalue in order to make our experience in this world more real and less uh, fictitious. As he writes, we have measured uh, the worth of the world according to the categories uh, which can only be applied to a purely fictitious world. 
A nihilist is more of a skeptic than a cynic. The two terms are often conflicted and conflated, but they constitute uh, two completely different attitudes uh, towards life. Nietzsche is clearly a skeptic. He considers uh, skepticism as something healthy and cynicism as something unhealthy. He enjoys living with a trial and error approach. He likes to experiment and most of his writings are an experiment in revolutionary thinking motifs. He wants to trigger us so we can look deeply behind things or under things. This is skepticism and it is a sign of mental health. On the other hand, uh, cynicism is about giving up. It is about uh, being so skeptical that you deny almost everything. When you are a cynic, uh, you prefer to shut things down instead of uh, investigating them uh, deeply. Nihilism is closer to skepticism than it is to cynicism. That's why he was so fond of the term. As he writes, concerning the genesis of the nihilist, the courage of all one really knows uh, comes but late in life. It is only quite recently that I have acknowledged uh, to myself that heretofore I have been a nihilist uh, from top to toe. The energy and thoroughness uh, with which I marched uh, forward as a nihilist deceived me concerning this fundamental principle. When one is progressing uh, towards a goal, it seems impossible that aimlessness uh, should be one's fundamental article of faith. The great uh, German philosopher Martin Heidegger also brooded a lot over the subject of nihilism. As he writes, first uh, nihilism as uh, Nietzsche thinks it uh, is the history of the devaluation of the highest values hitherto as the transition to the revaluation of all prior values, as a revaluation that comes to pass in the discovery of a principle for a new valuation, a principle Nietzsche recognizes as the will to power. Heidegger was a hardcore Nietzschean thinker. For Heidegger, Nietzsche is especially important because he is the manifestation of a constitutive uh, sense of the end of Western philosophy, but also the man who suggested a way forward through his ideas about nihilism and the Übermensch. Heidegger was deeply concerned uh, with the growing sense of emptiness befalling people who decided uh, to reject uh, traditional uh, religious values, but also couldn't find uh, alternatives. His most popular idea was Dasein, which uh, literally translates to being there. Heidegger uh, used the the term to shift uh, the focus on being and being involved uh, with the world which one inhabits while remaining aware of this uh, involvement. This idea was quite revolutionary since the notion of being was usually neglected uh, in favor of abstract ideas and uh, social myths. People didn't take the time to concern themselves with a deep exploration of their inner world, uh, their outer world and their relation to each other. In a sense, uh, Dasein uh, was his antidote uh, to nihilism. In closing, I want to point out that nihilism, the way we use it uh, today, has nothing to do with the way Nietzsche used it. Nihilism is not a belief in nothingness. Nihilism is the realization that uh, we shouldn't rely on outdated uh, belief systems and social myths uh, that don't uh, really serve our evolution. As Nietzsche writes in The Will to Power, inevitably nihilism will expose all cherished uh, beliefs and sacrosanct uh, truths as symptoms of a defective Western mythos. This collapse of meaning, relevance and purpose uh, will be the most destructive force in history, constituting a total assault on reality and nothing less than the greatest crisis of humanity. What I relate is the history of the next two centuries. I describe uh, what is coming, what can no longer come differently, the advent of nihilism. For some time now, our whole European culture has been moving us toward the catastrophe with a tortured tension that is growing from decade to decade, restlessly, violently, headlong, like a river that wants to reach the end. Nihilism is a warning to ourselves. It is a warning that we should work on this tension and not just ignore it, because ignoring it can have catastrophic consequences for everyone. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications and comment below something cool please so that more people can discover it. Uh, if you want to watch more videos from my channel, check out this one and this one. Take care, see you soon. Adrian out.